Hello again, Struck. Well, welcome back. Uh, today I'm bringing you another build video for the recently reworked Forged subclass in Torchlight 3. This is the Pressure Shooter, which as the name suggests is a pressure shot build. And I'm using again the Flaming Destroyer as a subclass. Um, ideally you might want to try it with an Electrode, something very similar but with the Electrode. Uh, as you can see, I'm using rapid fire to build uh, heat and like any other uh, new heat based build, you use uh, a skill of your choosing to build heat, um, then you use that heat um, by venting and then you get steam and then with steam you use your uh, steam spender skill, which all of them do a lot of damage, but I think since the highest damage per hit you can get with critical mass, then there's fracking strike. Uh, which does a little bit less damage but costs a little bit less uh, steam and then um, this one pressure shot does a ton of damage per hit uh, but it doesn't cost too much steam in fact you can get it down to like 7.5 steam and that means you can do so many hits for a single charge of your steam that it's just I think it can out um, out damage the damage per hundred uh, steam from uh, from critical mass compared to this one. Yeah, you don't do as much damage per hit. You can probably do when you min max the build with uh, uh, like around 100 damage to critical mass percent from your items and then flat damage in your chest, flat damage in your locomotion, nice flat damages in your cannon, maxed out crit uh, damage to 300%. Then you probably can do over a million damage. I haven't seen myself do more than 300 and something 400k um, when I stack uh, all the debuffs and when I slow the enemies and things like that. But my gear is pretty mediocre and my um, crit damage is like 180%. But I do have like 90 something percent damage to pressure shot. But yeah, things can be much better and uh, it can melt bosses um, reasonably quickly and when you min max it uh, the results would be pretty nice and the build in general feels very nice and it's a long range build after all and here we are at the skills segment where i'm going to talk about uh, which skills i take at what level and why first of all you probably would notice uh, why does he only have tier 2 rapid fire well honestly i'm not using rapid fire for damage i in fact you can see i probably need it um, just at the start of a map to get it going uh, and then uh, after that i just need like seven rapid fire shots to get 25 heat to get me from 50 to 70 to over 75 uh, which is pretty easy. Sometimes I wouldn't even need that um, rapid fire because I can do vent vortex bomb and then I can use power projection and boom I'm already at 75 hit and I can use another vent vorte vortex bomb if I needed to and, and I would keep it at um, 75 hit. So let's see one two three seconds to do like seven hits and I'm already uh, over 75 uh, hits. So uh, I don't use rapid fire much, very, very rare uh, and only when I need to go from 50 to over 75 hit. And why over 75 hit? Because the Mountain King uh, gauntlets that give me crit chance works after 75, uh, um, uh, after 75 hit when you vent. And you want to get that crit chance and stack it with the pressure shot and the crit chance from your gear so that you're maxing out your crit chance, capping it at 40%. Um, so, all things considered, let's talk about the other things. First of all, uh, rapid fire is 20% uh, uh, barrage skill damage and that's all I need from it. I need the 20% um, the barrage skill damage to make uh, pressure shot stronger. Another thing I like is Shotgun Blast. It gives me 20% heat generation, which works for this skill. It works for um, this skill. And if I decide to use Rapid Strike instead of Rapid Fire, it would work for this skill. Um, Sonic Pugs is super, super good. Uh, most of my old builds wouldn't take Sonic Pools to higher than tier 2, but now the tier 3, the new tier 3 Sonic Pools is a must have skill if you wanna use uh, Steam Spender. So we are getting Sonic Pools stunning the enemies, obviously a good thing. Sonic Pools uh, giving us a passive uh, Relic Energy Charge rate regardless whether it's active or not. And we get the tier 3 bonus where Sonic Pools now increases the damage of your Steam Spending skills by 40% for 6 seconds. 
So not only are the enemies taking 40% damage for 6 seconds, but um, we are doing 40% damage with pressure shot for 6 seconds. Uh, and this is just um, super good. Uh, shotgun blast hit generation as I mentioned and critical mass gives us damage to binded, swallowed or stunned. This is completely optional. And if you decide to replace Blazing Pillar with uh, Cloak of Flames, then obviously you wouldn't be swallowing as much unless you have swallow on your items. And then you might want to get rid of those points uh, in critical mass. This 10% damage might, might not seem like much, uh, but it actually is a solid number, especially the, the more damage you do, the more that 10% matters. Um, so yeah, if you decide to go for something like Sword Smash or like Cloak of Flames, then probably uh, if you don't have chance to swap, removing critical masses, uh, 4 points and putting them into Magma Burst. Uh, some people are asking me why Magma Burst and not Firestorm. Well, first of all, Firestorm uh, was a little bit stronger before. Uh, I didn't even realize it now only does 60% weapon damage. But Firestorm, um, there's a chance uh, on hit to, to proc. It doesn't have to be a crit like this one. It doesn't have to be a kill like this one. It just needs to be on hit and, and it procs a lot. So I can just try and show you. See how it's constantly proking. And now even the burns have a chance to proc it sometimes. Obviously it doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen. And you can see the other swords are also proking. And you can see it's not 4 seconds cooldown, because I just saw 2 fireballs within less than uh, 4 seconds. So there is this thing to consider. Um, it might say 4 second cooldown, but I don't think it's 4 seconds cooldown. Whereas this one, you need to kill a burning enemy or you need to be critically hitting a burning enemy, which with this build you should be doing often. But again, it's kind of the same, actually it's less damage and the chance on critical hit is 10%. Actually it's 5%. And this the chance is 10% and for this, um, the explosion chance on kill is 20%. But on kill... Uh, so yeah, that's why I prefer uh, Firestorm, but if you want, uh, as I said, put the 4 points from here over here, new you would have 5 points here, 5 points here, or alternatively put them into Energizer if you want Energizer. Um, other place where you can get points is removing summoning smash tier 1 and just keeping it as 1 point, or you can even put points into this one and keep that as tier 2, uh, or even try and get it as tier 3 if you remove uh, points from here. And the um, thing is, there aren't many places where I would suggest removing points. At best, uh, you might want to risk it and uh, remove points from Shotgun Blast alongside Critical Mass. That gives you 8 points. You could put 7 here, or you could put 4 here, 4 here. Um, and um, yeah, there's options. I would not remove Fracking Strike points, because the cooldown helps us with Sonic Pulse, it helps us with Power Projection, it uh, should help us with Ramming Robot, but it doesn't. Um, I wouldn't remove the Rapid Strike points, but you might want to, because Rapid Strike increases the damage of Vortex Bomb. And yeah, Vortex Bomb may not be our main uh, source of damage, but it adds up, so you could experiment and remove this Rapid Strike uh, point, those points in Rapid Strike, and remove that Bro Skills damage, and it's not gonna be terrible. Uh, if you want more damage to Relic Skills, you might consider putting 3 more points here. Um, and if you want to heal when using um, a Vortex Bomb, you could even consider putting 4 points into Cyclone Mode. Um, so every 2 seconds you have the chance to heal for 3%. And it's 15% chance to heal for 3%. That's why I don't really like it. Because it's on hit. Uh, it's not on cast, it's on hit. So with Vortex Bomb you could heal multiple enemies and heal multiple times if all of them proc. But this is better for Cyclone Mode and for Rapid Strike uh, rather than uh, than for Vortex. And this one is one pointer. I think it's more than enough as a one pointer. I wouldn't put more points into it uh, the way it is right now. So I think it's clear why I'm putting points where Ignition Source is amazing. Uh, if you don't have burn chance in your items, you really need it. If you have burn, burn chance in your in your items, this is actually even better 
then but you might want to just get burn chance in your gear remove the points from ignition source and put them elsewhere but i still strongly suggest keeping uh, ignition source uh, i really like it so what's optional is blazing pure can be replaced with cloak of flames or sword smash depending on what you like for range builds i think blazing pure or cloak of flames are better so whether you want extra 25% damage and uh, maybe stacking Cloak of Flames duration or whether you just want the Blazing Pewer so you can be able to cast Summoning Smash off more often, it's up to you. Now we're gonna talk about the Legendarium and first uh, I'd like to note that uh, as you can see I'm using uh, some Mountain King pieces and uh, Winter Weave Gauntlets. Uh, in the legendarium and I think the perfect setup would be slightly different uh, where you might want to be wearing Mountain King wheel instead of uh, Winter Weave wheel and then you would be swatting the Winter Weave wheel but whatever happens you want three pieces Winter Weave uh, and uh, three pieces Mountain King and the Mountain King pieces that are must have uh, regardless whether it's equipped or in the Legendarium would be Mountain King Helmet, Gauntlets and Cuirass uh, and Wheel. So that's the four pieces you want. Mountain King Cuirass, Mountain King Wheel, Mountain King Gauntlets and Mountain King Helmet. Then you want Winter Weave uh, Cuirass, um, Winter Weave Wheel, Winter Weave Gauntlets and maybe the Winter Weave Hatch or the Winter Weave Powdrons. Um, ideally I would be wearing Mountain King Helmet uh, Mounting King Gauntlets uh, and uh, the Mounting King Wheel and that would uh, leave it uh, for Winter Weave Powdrons, Winter Weave Cuirass, Winter Weave Hatch which is this one uh, and um, then I would put uh, the, the Winter Weave Wheel here the Mountain King Cuirass here and the Winter Weave Gauntlets here of course if you have better rolled version of one thing just, uh, just replace them uh, you can be flexible. The thing is, uh, I would stay away from Mountain King Powdron as equipped because uh, those don't do that much for us, the Exploder Bots. I would stay away from Mountain King Hatch unless using Sword Smash. And if you're using Sword Smash, then okay, so be it. It's nice, it's great, it's gonna be good synergy. But again, Sword Smash is more for a melee build. And um, I would stay away from Mountain King. Uh, Actually, I wouldn't stay away from Mountain King Cuirass. I mean, if you want to replace a bad road Winter Weave Cuirass with the Mountain King Cuirass, then you can just put the Winter Weave Cuirass in the in the um, Legendarium, uh, and um, that's gonna be good enough. But yeah, avoid uh, Mountain King Powdrons and avoid uh, Mountain King Hatch, um, and the rest is uh, just whatever fits wherever with the better rows. Uh, and that's why right now I'm using the Mountain King Wheel, the Mountain King Cuirass and the Winter Weave Gauntlets. Uh, which again, as I said, you might want to rework based on what's available and what isn't. Um, uh, you should be seeing on the screen some other alternative choices and on the website on strukweb.xyz, the text version of this build. You could see some other choices too. Next, let's talk about uh, pet skills. So. Um, I like using Defender because I think I've got enough crit chance in this build from the Mountain King uh, Gauntlets and uh, survivability is a must have uh, if you want to push the Fazir uh, further and further. I like using Healing Friendship, extra healing never hurt anyone and here um, it's optional whether you want Battle Cry, whether you want Defensive Posture, whether you want Zoomies and Zoomies synergize as well with the Drat, Neckband and uh, Token of Invigoration. Now whether you want other things uh, such as uh, this one which is broken right now or one of those which also seem broken or this one which also seems broken, it's up to you. You can even put stun or immobilize, whatever, uh, pick whatever fits, uh, whatever you like um, and that should be fine. And the way I like uh, doing it is Defender, Healing Friendship, Zoomies and Battle Cry. Next let's uh, talk about the gear and here we are at the gear segment where I'm gonna talk about the items I would like using uh, ideally my perfect uh, uh, ideal setup um, which obviously I don't have I've got mediocre items and mediocre uh, rows so I will talk about preferred rows and preferred uh, best in SWAT items. 
Um, normally I would start with uh, start with my own gear, but this time I'm gonna start with the pet items. So Drat neck bend with attack speed and uh, and uh, faster cooldown for pet active uh, skills with the socket and um, in the socket you can put more faster cooldown for pet active skills. Why attack speed and cooldown? Because attack speed is good synergy with on pet hits recover HP for you and the pet. Um, and uh, why the cooldown? Because the cooldown works with all pet uh, skills such as healing friendship for example and it's great. Uh, and then you want token of invigoration which I can't show you and maybe token of rapid bartering. Um, bartering is good for farming. If you don't uh, send your pet for potions and to sell often then maybe phoenix token to resurrect it. But if it doesn't die often then you don't need the phoenix token. And then maybe you can put something like inferno or clockwork or whatever else you like. My ideal setup normally is rapid bartering, uh, um, token of invigoration and drought neck bend. And I try to make sure everything is rolled with faster cooldown for pet active skills and attack speed and then a socket. And that's how I like it. Uh, you might want to do it differently. Now let's talk about um, the sets. As I said, you would want three pieces Mountain King, three pieces um, Winter Weave. Ideally, you would be wearing Winter Weave uh, Drones, Winter Weave Quiras and Winter Weave Hatch, and Mountain King Wheel, Mountain King Gauntlets, uh, Mountain King Helmet, while swatting in the Legendarium Mountain King uh, um, Quiras, uh, the, the Winter Weave Wheel, and um, the, the Winter Weave Gauntlets. Um, and uh, let's talk about uh, the rows. On the helmet you would want crit chance and uh, maybe things like relic generation, maybe more defenses. And if you're lucky you can get something like uh, uh, one extra level, two extra levels, three extra levels to a certain skill uh, you want. Since it's legendary it should be giving you three levels. Three levels to, to whatever else you've got more than one point. Why something you've got more than one point into? Uh, well, because uh, it, it's best that way, because if, 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 if you only have one point into a skill and then you remove it, it's not going to be bad, it's still going to give you enough points, but um, it, it has to be either one point only, like this one, and then you get three points, and then you still get the tier one bonus, but, um, but do you get the tier 1 bonus if you don't have a, a point invested into it? That's that's a question I'm wondering. So if I have 0 points, 0 levels in a skill, can I benefit from the tier 1, 2, 3 bonuses? I don't know, I haven't tested. Um, but ideally I try to, to, to wear things that I've got more than 1 point or at least 1 point invested into those skills. Um, then on the shoulders you would want damage with swag shot and crit damage. And if you're working some defenses and the socket. On the chest piece you would want damage with swag shot, uh, crit damage, flat damage, those are the three best things you can get. Then extra defenses or extra elemental damage etc as percent. If you get elemental damage try to get it flat. So uh, my perfect role would be damage with swag shot, crit uh, damage and then flat damage and a socket. Um, then. For the winter weave, uh, for the for the mountain king or winter weave wheel, you would want damage with swag shot, you would want crit chance, and you would want flat damage. So just like the chest, but instead of crit damage, it can get crit chance, not crit damage. Uh, and um, and then a, a socket for more defenses. And then on the hatch, you cannot get flat damage, and you cannot get um, damage to a skill. You can get duration to a skill, like duration to sonic pools, duration to power projection, things like those. But they're not uh, they're not a priority. But if you go for Quoku Flames, get duration to Quoku Flames. If you decide to go for a Quoku Flames version, duration is amazing. Uh, something like this one here that you're seeing. Um, duration to Quoku Flames and crit damage. If this one had a socket, um, it would have been uh, top notch. Uh, only the health uh, again uh, is kind of uh, fucking it up. Um, and on the hatch you can get uh, percent elemental, like percent fire, percent poison, percent physical, etc. Um, so keep that in mind. So as I said, perfect rolls for the Mountain King hatch, crit uh, damage, top priority. Then you would probably want duration to something, but it's not important. But more defenses, heat generation, things like that would really help. 
uh, and if you're lucky you can get elemental damage that matches your highest element. Um, on the gauntlets uh, you can get duration as well, so duration to cloak of flames, power projection etc depending what you're using. Uh, Sonic Pulse is nice, but defenses are good and uh, not sure if this is still possible, but uh, we used to have things like uh, um, um, this this bonus here, the plus percent to burn chance affixes. If you get a gauntlet with this one, uh, it's amazing. And um, then on the shield, ideally you would be wearing a frost wall shield with the, I would suggest wearing either a north mace or a glacier's edge. I think the glacier's edge would be a better synergy. So if you have a good road glacier's edge and wear it alongside a frost wall, uh, it would be amazing. Uh, and chance to swallow is not bad because it would synergize well with this extra 10% extra damage to swallow targets. So that's um, what you want. And on the frost wall, you would want at the top uh, flat damage, like the holy icon I've got right now over 10,000 flat damage, you would want block chance at the top, you would, you would always have block chance but not always the flat defense. Then at the bottom ideally some extra block chance, maybe some slow, maybe some um, extra defenses uh, would be nice. And then roll it for chance to burn uh, or uh, percent to burn chance affixes, either of the two are fine. Uh, for the glacier's edge ideally you would have um, See, at the top you would always have flat damage at the top, but in the middle you would want at least two f uh, flat damage affixes. So instead of skill level to sonic pulse and power projection over there, I would like uh, to have extra f flat damages. And then maybe one row with crit damage would be perfect, and then a socket where you can put more flat damage would be um, the gold row. And then on the cannon you want the same, um, the same thing. You want uh, the flat damage at the top, which always um, comes. You want the crit chance at the top, which always comes. In the middle, you want two times flat damage and uh, one time crit damage and then a socket. Um, and uh, in the socket, more flat damage. And the best weapon, the best cannon to look for, uh, to look out for would be the unstable war arm. So let's say this unstable war arm, instead of chance to bleed, um, uh, if I had another flat damage and instead of basic damage, um, damage to basic attacks I had crit damage then instead of chance to bind maybe chance to burn or something like that um, it would have been perfect with the socket uh, and it would have been amazing even things like rel relic energy generation are not bad just make sure you're, you're using things that are useful to you basic attacks are not useful to you Chance to bind, it's fine, but um, not always nice. And chance to bleed, etc. You would want chance to burn, not uh, not the bleed um, for that build. So yeah, uh, the perfect draw would be flat damage, crit chance at the top, then flat damage, flat damage, chance to burn, crit damage, and socket with more flat damage on an unstable war arm, um, um, because we're using vortex bomb and it's a good synergy. Then uh, what else you wa you would wanna look for uh, would be um, you would wanna look out for uh, what am I mi I'm probably missing something. Um, well, maybe maybe I maybe I I said everything there is to say. I'm I'm thinking I said everything there is to say. So we'll s if I missed something, check uh, strakweb.xyz and there should be some more information. And next we can just move on to showing you some more gameplay footage. And here we are at the gameplay segment where I normally show you more of the build in action and I talk about uh, different ways to rotate the skills or my preferred way to rotate the skills if uh, I want to talk about just one. In this case, there might be multiple ways to rotate the skills, for example, uh, you know, you need to start uh, the map by building heat and you do that with uh, rapid fire but something that can really help you build heat as well is um, power projection. With the passive bonus of, uh, of shotgun blast that gives you uh, extra, extra steam, uh, extra not steam, extra heat generation, um, power projection can generate 25 uh, heat and that 25 heat is all you need 
um, to get it from 50 after venting and getting 50 with the mounting king wheel to 75 which is the minimum needed to proc um, the mounting king gauntlets so yeah you start generating uh, heat you build up 75 heat then you vent with furnace uh, with uh, with vortex bomb um, you could use sonic pulse before or after the venting but make sure you use sonic pulse um, within a reasonable time uh, before using um, pressure shot. If you use Sonic Pulse too early, the debuff would end before you're done using uh, up your steam with uh, pressure shot. So either either use it right before venting or right after venting. Uh, obviously it's better to do it before venting so that uh, um, Vortex Bomb could benefit from that one from that extra bonus damage to the enemies um, that are vulnerable and then after that, after you vent, start using uh, pressure shot uh, once you need to get more heat uh, you might either want to use rapid fire again or just pop a, pop a power projection um, anytime in between uh, one vent and the next one and that would give it uh, uh, vent from 50 to 75 again keep in mind we're using the mounting king wheel which means every time we vent with Vortex Bomb, we get 50 heat. Uh, and that 50 heat, um, as I said, with that extra 25 from Power Projection is more than enough to trigger the Mountain King Gauntlets that give us 20% crit chance. To get notified when I upload more content for this game or uh, other games like this one, which would be Wooters of all varieties, isometric, uh, third-person ARPGs, uh, water shooters and all sorts of uh, waters like that. You could subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out uh, on my content updates. And optionally, you can even join as a member of the Struck Club uh, on YouTube as a channel member to get access to exclusive perks such as uh, special emotes custom made by me, special badges custom made by me that represents how many months you have been a member for. Uh, as well as uh, opt-in uh, of editing tutorials that I can give for Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, as well as uh, shout-outs and things like that. And I would like to use this uh, part of the video to thank all my um, YouTube members and uh, Twitch subscribers. Thank you for supporting the channel and keeping me going. Uh, thank you also for watching this video, everyone. Keep it cool, uh, Struck Club. Until next time and goodbye.